So I'm going to address an Instagram uh, concern with my plunger face extension on the Heston baler. Uh, Cody has has built this set and welded them in there. Uh, the concern was that the plunger would push the bale back farther into the bale chamber and causing the bale to be looser in its, uh, you know, causing the bale to be looser uh, than it, or not as tight as what it could possibly be by, um, you know, uh, if I hadn't put those in there. So some of the big problems with these big 4x4 four four balers is the fact that it does not push the bale back into the bale chamber far enough to uh, alleviate some of the spring back from the bales of the slice of hay because the or flake of hay now the flake of hay that is pushed up into the bale chamber is pre-compressed in the front there underneath the plunger and then it gets shot clear up to the top if it is a full slice of hay or flake of hay and then the theory is or not the theory but the operation of this thing is the plunger pushes it back and then in the right and left sides and top there are plunger dogs Okay, so those dogs, plunger dogs or hay dogs, are basically uh, swing away um, pieces of steel that pass. They go the slice of hay or flake of hay goes past that. They protract or retract into the sides of the baler or the outside of the baler, and then when the plunger comes past, they come back in, and then when the plunger goes back, the plunger dog holds the slice or flake of hay from interfering with the next slice of hay or flake of hay that goes up for the, to form the next uh, flake of hay. The problem is in a 4x4 four four baler because the height is a, a full foot taller than what say a 3x3 three three or a 3x4 bale is and it's, it is 4 feet wide or 46 and a half or 47 inches wide uh, and tall that the center of the bale will actually spring back or even slab off and fall back into the precharge chamber creating a problem especially in dry material. Wet material not so much. Wet material is more difficult to handle because it doesn't uh, slide as easy on steel that's why I've got plastic in there and stuff like that. So uh, I, I do know that that is a fact that it will actually push the hay back farther, but it doesn't push it back. If you see, I've got it tapered at the top and at the bottom. There's a full eight inches or nine inches. Well, there's a full, let's see, nine inches of, ten inches of taper at the bottom. And at the top, there's a full, geez, I'm going to say foot and a half or so. A good foot and a half from the taper to the top of the bale chamber. So that will not, <laughs> that makes a big difference because I really only want to push the center of that hay forward to keep the spring back uh, and push, force that bale back. It is only going to move that uh, slice or flake of hay or bale of hay an inch, inch and a, an inch and a half to two inches farther back than what it would naturally go due to the manufacturer. Um, I built this baler. This is the second one of these that I've done. The first one I did worked extraordinarily well. Uh, didn't have any problems. I sold that baler. The new owner of it is thrilled to death to own the baler. He says the best, best bale and baler he's ever owned in a 4x4 four four, and uh, he's happier than pigs and shit. So, um, what are the other ways that we can uh, make the bale tighter, you might ask. How do you make a bale tighter if, uh, you know, if you're pushing it back and actually reducing the density of the baler by pushing it back because your strings are an inch and a half to two inches slack? Okay, well that's where these things come in. Okay, so as these bales are formed, the bale is formed, uh, there is an, a natural amount of spring back towards the plunger. And it's not in the first slice of hay or even the second or third or fourth. It's pretty much throughout the entire length of the bale chamber. Now a lot of guys were talking about this uh, diamond plate. Why did you use this diamond plate instead of smooth? It would only make sense that the bale would need to flow freely through the bale chamber in order for 
for it to come out easier. Well, that's not what you want to happen. You actually want that bale to have something to grab it so that the spring back is reduced. Okay, because every time you have spring back, it pushes farther back than what you want it to do, and then it springs back into the bale chamber quite a ways, and you don't get the density that you want. So that's why I've added the, the, uh, uh, the, yeah, the diamond plate or waffle board, as some people will call it. Um, and then there is still this this uh, smooth surface here. Okay, so you got a smooth surface. Beyond that, which uh, once that gets polished up, it's going to be super slippery and it'll be harder and harder to compress the bale and keep it from springing back. So the old baler had two sets of hay wedges that were factory hay wedges that someone had welded in. I'm not going to buy factory hay wedges. I'm actually going to build my own, or I have got them built. Joseph cut them. I designed them and Cody's going to weld them in because I have to get ready for the straw job. So basically here's a piece of angle iron. There's one and a half by one and a half angle iron and that's going to be welded in the side of the baler like that and then I've got this piece right here. There's my rain. And I've got this piece right here which will be welded in here to the angle iron and here to the board and there will not be two of those there will be three of those so what that does is it's a gentle enough slope it's a three inch uh, slope uh, wedge and what that will do is it'll allow the hay to pass and come this way towards the back of the baler and then when the when the plunger releases it will reduce the spring back it will restrict the hay from it will restrict the hay, the path of the hay, uh, so that it slows down its travel back, increasing density, not pressure on the boards, but density in the bale, and it will actually reduce the amount of spring back further down the line of the bale compression chamber or bale chamber. So the first one that I had that I modified, I didn't do anything with hay wedges. There were two of them in there, one at the beginning of the ramp, or the there's a ramp on these boards. I don't know if you can see it, but you should be able to see how it goes right there. So it kind of tapers inward by about an inch or inch and a half at the from the hinge plate back to, to about a foot and a half this way. So there's going to be one there. There's going to be one at the at the uh, at the bend or at the wedge or the taper and then there's going to be another one right here maybe a foot back from here so it'll be a foot and a half then another one and then a foot and a half this way and then this diamond plate will keep the 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 bale that is already formed in a nice tight uh, in a nice tight configuration because Again, as that bale is compressed and relaxed, compressed, relaxed, compressed, relaxed, as it comes out the, uh, out the back of the baler, it will actually work on the knot and weaken the knot and cause a knot failure. And that's just a known fact. That's what happens. So to, I hope I've answered the questions of the face extensions, why I put them in. I hope it's answered why I've used the diamond plate, and I hope it has explained why I'm doing the hay wedges and what the, what the purpose of a hay wedge is. It's all about density. So with these three things that I've done, that will reduce the um, interference from the, sl the slice of hay and it will push the bale back farther making it easier on the tractor and drive line because an inch and a half back farther the connecting rods are actually farther forward before the real power gets into you know into that gearbox and the hay wedges will reduce the will increase the friction on the bale and reduce the spring back even further than what the dogs and the um, and the plunger extensions, and these here will reduce the the constant. Uh, I, I guess you could consider it like a water hammer or the slack. You know, it's like when you pull with a chain. If you get a head start and slack that chain tight and fast, you break a chain link. But if you pull it taut and then gently pull, you don't break the chain link. 
you just pull what you're pulling behind you or you know <laughs> then that's the way that works and that's basically the analogy that is used with this stuff uh, the boards are extraordinarily heavy uh, so there is a there is going to be some stuff done here at the floor to alleviate pressure on these because we don't want to break the hinges out of the baler and you'll watch that happen yet today so life is good hopefully you enjoyed that segment of baler um, uh, baler uh, capacity increase uh, technology, I guess, or the Pandy Power Pack uh, improvement on this baler. And yes, it will, it will work. I know it will work. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe for